there, hi there, ho there, hello there. My name's Adam. Welcome back to the channel, Capote Inc. Uh, if you're coming back for more and you haven't subscribed, hook a player up so you can see me doing my most excellent work. Uh, today, or over the last couple of days, I've already got it fixed, but I'm going to kind of go through what I did to troubleshoot my Hineker snowplow. Uh, it's just a four function plow, nothing special. Um, it's a little older plow, but I've uh, been seeing these things really don't change much um, unless you start getting into the C plow or the V plow, you know, the flip over plow or whatever, stuff like that. Even my scoop plow that I have, poly trip edge scoop plow that I have is all the same shit. So let's get kicking. First thing I noticed when I went to hook the plow up uh, was that this guy right here, there's a little light on the top of the remote, on the top of the controller, that that wasn't lit. And that's obviously a problem. Um, whether the plow is on or off, if this controller has power, which mine is switched, so I have, I have a green light now, but mine is switched. Um, I think you should be, if not, I don't know, I guess I, I worry about the battery, but, um, and it's not working, we have issues. So there should be a switch power source, which mine comes out of the glove box here. I checked that, that was good. Um, and then there's also a fuse on the battery. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but you, sh you should have a green light on here. If you don't, you don't have power somewhere. Obviously, check your connection. We got down here where my controller plugs in. Duh, make sure the connection is good there. Look and see if any wires are chewed, whatever. You know, like first thing you should do is when you don't have power, check your fuses, then see if you start having problems with wires or whatever. So uh, my fuses were both good but I still didn't have power. So next thing, I go check the relay bank. Let's go check it out. Next up, we're over here at the relay bank. Um, here's mine. I don't, have a, I don't have a cash, it just kind of sits in there. Uh, three relays, um, they're interlocked together with these holders here, pretty nifty actually. Um, so I just started poking around. I got a power probe here. Uh, you can use a test light, power probe is pretty kits. I highly recommend getting one. Um, so I had, uh, at the time, I had um, some power here, let's see, yeah, I had power here, well, I don't have power here currently, but I was checking the back of all these. Um, my dad's truck, uh, I don't know, he's got a Dodge, I don't know if the inner fender wells are fucked or what. Uh, they, they seem to just let his ends up being corroded to shit every year. It's terrible. Uh, but, so, uh, I didn't have power. What was going on here? I had power to it, but I didn't have power coming out of the one relay here. So I just did the simple thing, and I just sw swapped two relays. Bam, I had power. Um, I think the way this works, you know, I'm probably wrong, but um, just being that you have all these yellow wires and green wires, those are typically your marker lights, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm guessing these two, these two relays control your headlight situation, and marker lights, and uh, Maybe they do some functions as well, but this one, this relay here, I do believe is your main power relay for stuff. So we got that uh, relay switch and it started working. So I had a shit relay, so I just swapped it out. I keep a bunch of these around because we have a whole shit ton here for both. So problem one we found, bad relay. Light turned on on the, uh, on the controller. When, right? But when, I'm hitting the, but when I hit the button on the controller, the light goes out. And I had power over there, and the fuse was good, I held it up to the light, but it wasn't good. So uh, let's move over there, and we'll talk about that. All right, we're over here at the battery, as Jerry used to say. Um, also right here, I have mounted my solenoid. Uh, so this solenoid really just takes a signal from the controller, and this passes your heavy 12-volt circuit to the, to the pump. Um, so this, if your plow it never lifts, you just find this, and all you got to do is Grab a vice script, a jumper cable, a wire, and all you're gonna do is add 12 volts to this guy here. So I'll use my power probe. This is pretty sweet here, right? Just add power. So I'm touching it. It's telling me zero volts. I add power. Boom. It'll lift the, lift the plow up. You have to do the solenoid down there to, to release it so the plow's up off the ground a little bit. Alright, so the problem I had was I did have power at the uh, the controller, but I didn't have um, Enough, it was almost like it was tripping out, it didn't make sense. So what it ended up being is, here's the old fuse. This fuse is still good. It still passes current through it and everything. Uh, or it's not blown, I should say, but let me, probably not gonna get it. 
The look of this is, is just the slightest corrosion. It looks like uh, galvanized, like the walls in, in my shop here. Galvanized, that's just dirty. Um, you know, there's no, no shit, you know, there's no, like, you could, I keep my battery connections pretty clean here or whatever, but you know, the corrosion you get out of battery. None of that. The fuse holder itself didn't really have any of that either, but uh, it just wasn't passing enough current through it. Um, so what I did is I checked both sides of the fuse here, obviously you can go, all right, we got voltage there, we got voltage here, we got a good fuse. So I was checking it actually on the back side of the plug and I was getting like odd readings, which didn't make sense. I had full 12 volts on one side, but the other side, it was just odd readings. And it was because there was just a really poor connection going through this fuse. Something I've never really dealt with before. They're either blown usually or not, or they're super corroded. This one doesn't, you, you'd use this fuse if you saw it and you grab it out of the box, you'd use this one. But uh, I'm not going to, am I? See you later. Um, so we got the new fuse in there and that solved all my woes with all the electrical grommings, which was, whew, uh, I thought I was gonna be chasing down a wire that a mouse chewed or some shit, you know, the plow truck doesn't get a lot of miles in the summertime, so. Um, I also had to replace the plow motor, so we'll get to that. Here is the plow motor. I took off of the old Hineker there. Um, let me take the screws up. You can kind of see that deliciousness, this burned nasty shit. It's like your dad's bowl after college, I imagine. Uh, was in there. There was also a chunk in there, so we knew she was in rough shape. I don't know if you can hear. That's got to do with the fact, this slipping out has to do with the fact that uh, the bolts are out of it or whatever. But the bolt, through bolts aren't. But uh, you could spin this thing. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it's not smooth. Not at all like your single problem dates cooter. Uh, so this thing wasn't working. So what I was doing was I was putting voltage to my 12 volt solenoid up there and this pump should run when you hit voltage to there. As long as your cables are good, obviously check your cable connections. And so then I, I bypassed it and I just used jumper cables to get on the ground stud and the power stud and it still wasn't turning. So something tells me there's something wrong. I was having problems with it at the end of the season last year. So I assumed it be an issue. So I just ordered a new one. What I did, this one has a sticker on it and it was a, let's see here, uh, made exclusively for SPX stone and the part number is a 4142AC and I just plugged that into the uh, old Google machine there and they gave me some pump that I found on Amazon. Uh, I think they were like 80 bucks or something. Uh, replaced it and it fit perfectly, worked flawlessly. When you take it apart, all you have to do is you take this cover off with these two screws, uh, two Phillips head screws, hopefully they're not corroded too bad. Then there's just these two bolts right here, they're long, they're freaking, I don't know, what are they, seven inches long, something that or, uh, and then there's a sleeve that goes from this flying shaft onto the flying shaft of the pump. Slide it off, put it on, replace the wires, rinse and repeat, she works flawlessly. You can see the shiny new bump on there. That was as simple as unhook the red wire, unhook the ground, and there was another ground that came up, one of the solenoids that hooked main, into the main ground there. Uh, these other solenoids I have seem to ground through the body of the solenoid so that you don't have to have a, a second wire. They just All they do is take current in, um, open, close. I've had problems with these in the past as well. So your pump will go up and down, but your plow won't turn. Uh, and what's happening is there, there's a slider valve in the center here that just slides back and forth. Sometimes these things have a little uh, nub on the end that you can push in and knock it loose. Um, what I've done is I just take them off. You literally just got to knock that thing loose on the inside, put it back together and it'll work. As long as your solenoids are functioning, uh, I have had the slider valve in the center here uh, slide, uh, just stick, sitting all summer or whatever. Uh, never had success hitting it with a hammer. And get them loose, which of course is always step one hit it with a fucking hammer. So, uh, yeah, plows electrical is not working. Uh, another way to tell the things are going on, you can always just check to make sure that your lights will switch because even though the, the light on my controller wouldn't turn on, I could switch between the plow, plow and truck power with the lights. So, 
that's how you know that there, there's some connection going through the uh, controller there. You know, there's potential that the controller could be bad. I'm not sure how to check all that. I have, I have like three or four controllers, so I just plug in a different controller. Two don't work. Well, there's probably something wrong with, with the plow, but not everybody has that luxury. So there she is, boys. A uh, few holes in it. Um, catch that. Not quite throw a cat through that, but you know, we can try. Um, anyways. You might see the gravel here, and that's because the plow didn't want to pick up when I uh, hooked up to it. So we just plowed that way into the shop. Aces work on that, that man. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got a nine foot Hineker four function plow here. Uh, it's still pretty stout, it's just that the mold board's got a few holes in it. I always laugh when people, uh, I sell uh, skid loader plows, and people are like, oh, it's got a hole in it. And say, yep. Uh, so, like, it's, what are you losing through there with snow? And usually they pack full. So. Having a hole in the mold board really isn't that big of a deal, especially if you're not plowing commercially. Like, if you're just doing your driveway, that plow's going to last you 20 years. So, I wouldn't be too concerned. Small holes. Anyways, um, we got everything figured out. We found out that the uh, uh, fuses were okay. I mean, we replaced the one. Uh, we swapped the relays around and found out that we had a bad one, so we replaced that. We got the new motor on here. Uh, that turned out pretty nice. Um, so, last thing to do is just double check and make sure everything works. Uh, she's a beaut, Clark. She's a beaut. So, ready to plow some snow. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.